What's going on guys? So right here I'm showing you a few exercises that I enjoy doing before starting my squat workout. I really enjoy doing these exercises just because it helps me increase my body temperature and it loosens up my hip. I like going down in a squat and pushing my knees out to make sure I stretch my groin and lunging down into this position right here just to make sure my hip flexors and my groin stay loose. One thing that I feel like everyone should prioritize is their warm up because it primes your central nervous system and it prepares you for the workout that, um, that you're about to do, whether it be upper body or lower body. Making sure you stay nice and limber helps you prime your central nervous system and may prevent you from getting injured. Also, if you're squatting, stretching your ankles is very, very important, especially if you have tight ankles because it helps you get depth in your squat. So very quickly guys, I'm gonna show you what I use for my squat day in terms of equipment and gear. So right here I have my squat shoes, the Nike Romelio 3s, I just got these. So the shoes I used to use before were the Adidas Power Lifts. So if you want me to make a review on comparing the two shoes, let me know in the comments down below. Just a, a quick rundown, these shoes they're great, the heel is very sturdy. I feel cemented into the ground and because I have some narrow feet, uh, the narrowness of the shoe is perfect to fit uh, my feet just because my, my feet are, again, very skinny. SBD knee sleeves, okay. Um, I've been having some knee issues. A lot of people when they have knee issues, a lot of times try to find a solution just wearing knee sleeves can kind of help you push through your workouts and maybe even eliminate the pain when you're squatting. So SBD knee sleeves have really saved my, my right knee which has been giving me issues. Also foam rolling your, your quads after your workout or even before your workout can help relieve knee pain just because quad tightness can be one of the causes for knee pain. Also, I have my Inzer belt. Okay, the, um, shout out to Juan from Steelhouse, my coworker. He gave me that belt as a gift. I, I had a red one, a 13 millimeter, for years, but it was crushing my ribs. And um, I just mentioned to him that I, I need a 10 millimeter, and he gave it to me as a gift. You know, I I owe him. He's the best. Uh, shout out to Juan. So guys, the pre-workout that I'm currently using is Tier 1 from Citadel Nutrition. I don't have the tub with me, but I'll post a picture. Tier 1, best pre-workout in my opinion. I don't have to worry about any proprietary blends or anything like that. So it's a really, really good pre-workout that helps me focus. I feel like you should only be taking pre-workout if you really need it. Um, whenever I feel like I have enough energy to train hard, then I don't take it. So because I'm low in carbs and calories, my energy is sometimes not there. So pre-workout just helps me grind through these, uh, these hard leg days. You don't really need to buy pre-workout. You can always drink a black cup of coffee, but I enjoy pre-workout because it's flavored. Also the beta alanine in it, I like that tingly sensation because it just gets me amped up. So tier one, Citadel Nutrition, highly recommend them. Go check them out. What's going on guys? So when you're warming up for squats, it's important that you start very light just with the bar and work your way up to your working set. If you decide to add on the weight and immediately start your working set, then you risk getting injured. And at the same time, you won't perform as well. Warming up allows for your central nervous system to be primed for the heavier weight. Right here you see me, I'm squatting 135 and just making sure my hips are loose, trying to move the bar as fast as I can. Also, another thing when you're warming up, you want to try to move the weight as fast as you can just like you would 
for your heavier weight. So also when you're squatting, you want to make sure you move the weight as fast as possible, which allows for you to produce more force. And right here on this next clip, I know some people have some issues putting on SPD sleeves. So I'm just giving you, showing you guys how I do it. I like to roll the bottom half, then the upper half, I like rolling it on top of the bottom rolled up half, then pulling it up towards my kneecap then unraveling it from there so it's really not that hard unless you have really big calves right here this is 225 and it's moving pretty good guys so my squats are feeling really good right now I might go for 315 if my warm-up sets continue feeling this way I might just ride that wave and go for 315 for as many sets as I can for five reps so the way I've been progressing on my squats after this surgery is that I've been going for five sets of five once I hit five sets of five I add anywhere from 10 to 20 pounds depending how I feel then I try to do as many sets of five reps as I can with the heavier weight once I feel like my form is breaking down, I then decrease to the amount of weight I did previously and try to finish the remaining sets of five that I have left. So if I'm only able to get two or maybe even one set of five or 315, I then drop back down to 195, which is, which is what I did on my previous workout, 195 and uh, finish the remaining sets of five. So those reps move kind of slow, but I feel like it's more because I'm being somewhat hesitant. I'm gonna go up to 195 and see how it feels. Yeah guys, I don't think I'm gonna increase by 10 pounds this week just because I can feel that the weight is moving slow and it feels heavy on my back. So I'm just gonna increase by five pounds and do 300 for as many sets of five as I can. But as you get heavier in your warm-ups, um, your body just reacts differently. I mean, especially now that I'm on a diet, I think my body is, is starting to feel it, especially towards my leg progression. So far, my back and my leg strength has been increasing. Um, my bench strength has been decreasing a lot, but I think the cut is starting to catch up to my leg workouts. dropping down to 275 just because I'm happy with those three sets and I don't want to be greedy or get greedy with my progress. That last set felt like an RPE of eight. So I'm gonna stop there, drop down, and finish the remaining two sets. Don't be scared to drop in weight. 
Leave your ego at the door and make slow and steady progress. As far as accessories, on this day I did stiff legged deadlifts, making sure I keep my back straight and thrusting with my hips. And then I did Bulgarian split squats, four sets of eight to 12 reps. And then I superset kettlebell swings with the GHR, which really helps me target my glutes, which is probably one of my biggest weaknesses, which has helped a lot to resolve a lot of my back pain. So guys, the gym right now, it's, it's kind of dead and I just wanted to take the time to show you guys what I'm eating. My last meal was some protein cookies that I ate before working out, like at 2 p.m. And right now it's 6.38. Luckily it's been busy, so it's kept me entertained. It's kept me, kept my mind off the hunger. Some tilapia with some sweet potato. And right in here, I have some chicken and broccoli with some sweet potato. And I had to take off about right here. I had to take off about half of the fish that I initially cooked. I'm not sure, there it is. Half of the fish that I initially cooked, I removed it because I noticed that after I input the protein cookies, I was about 13 grams over the amount of protein that I was supposed to eat. So I cut my fish portion half of the day but I still have a good amount of carbs and fat for the night which is awesome I like saving some carbs and fats uh, for nighttime just so I can uh, feed my cravings but that's what I'm eating for the remainder of the day and I'll see you guys later tonight to show you guys what I eat so guys I just finished work and I still have around 30 plus carbs and like 18 grams of fat left, but I wanted to take advantage and show you guys a physique update. Especially with the lighting here at the gym, it's pretty, it looks pretty sick. I've lost around 11 pounds, and I'm for sure in probably single digit body fat percentage, and I'm really happy with my progress so far, just being two weeks out. And after having a refeed yesterday, plus after eating my last meal that I brought here to work, I'm starting, my muscles have filled up a little bit, so I'm looking pretty sick right now. It's the front, okay. My hair is a mess, so get my head on. Right here. Boom. Here. Triceps. So, it's pretty awesome. This physique update, guys. I'm currently looking, weighing 160, 161. What's up, guys? I just got home from work, and right now I'm eating my last meal. 185 protein, I, I ate 191. 180 carb, I ate 183, and my fat goal is 55, but I've only eaten 50, and that's okay. You wanna be plus or minus five, the most 10 grams for all your macronutrients. If you don't hit it spot on, it's okay. If you guys haven't seen my macronutrient breakdown video, you should go watch that. I explained there how you can break down and calculate your macronutrient distribution to start your diet. So if you watch that video, I show you how to ca calculate protein, carbs, and fats. I also mentioned at the very end of the video, or towards the end, that you wanna include at least 25 grams of fiber for males and at least 20 for female, or 
consume 10 grams for every 1,000 calories. So as long as you're eat, consuming enough fiber, you can eat um, these starchy carbs like rice cakes and things like maybe a brownie or things like that. But the only issue with them with that is that it doesn't have a lot of fiber, so it might not keep you as full throughout the day. So everything's a balance. You want to be able to have enough fiber and eat the right uh, nutrient-dense foods in order to keep you full. But if not, if you decide to eat something like this, then you probably won't be as satiated throughout the day. So keep that in mind. What I've enjoyed doing is eating a lot of veggies for breakfast in order to keep me satiated throughout the day and save a lot of carbs for at night for, for any cravings that I may have. And that just lets me ad more adhere to my diet. If I eat only or mainly veggies throughout the day, I'm, I've probably only eaten like 30 grams of carbs through veggies. So I can save the rest of my carbs, whatever I have left, um, for things like ice cream or like some rice cakes or whatever it may be that I'm craving.